A very good morning to you all across this great country of ours. Well, it's Tony Abbott's fifth anniversary as Liberal leader, but not a lot to celebrate this morning, judging by those latest opinion polls. Figures right there. It follows a ragged week for the Liberal government. For more, we are joined live by Tony Abbott from his office in Canberra. PM, good morning to you. Where did it all go wrong? Good morning, Carl. Well, Carl, uh, the carbon tax has been successfully repealed. The mining tax has been successfully repealed. Uh, the boats are stopping, uh, free trade agreements are being negotiated. Mm. Uh, the repeal of the carbon tax means that every household is $550 a year better off. So, I'm um, sure uh, the polls aren't so great, uh, but no one said that the task of budget repair would be easy. No one said that uh, tackling six years of a debt and deficit disaster was going to be easy, but I think the Australian people can be very confident that they've had a good year under their belt, that uh, we're getting the fundamentals right and that we are delivering for the people of Australia. I say to the people of Australia, we are delivering for you. That's what we set out to do when we were elected and every day this year that's exactly what we've done. Peter Costello says this morning uh, getting rid of the barnacles has been as choppy as the barnacles themselves. He's right, isn't he? Well, look, uh, Peter's obviously entitled to his view. Uh, again, Carl, uh, no one said that the task of tackling uh, the debt and deficit disaster that mm. Labor left us would be easy. Uh, we're repairing the budget. Labor is doing its best to sabotage the budget. And um, I'm not complaining. Uh, because, yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the Senate that the, that the people elected. But if you look back over the year, Everything that this government has uh, been able to do without needing um, uh, parliamentary approval has been done pretty effectively. Uh, look at the way we've handled foreign policy issues like MH17, MH370. Uh, look at the way we've handled uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the foreign fighters threat, uh, the uh, ISIL death cult threat. Uh, look at the way we've dealt with the free trade negotiations. Um, sure, it gets tougher when you've got to negotiate your legislation past your political opponents uh, in the Senate. And I wish the Labor Party uh, wasn't in such a feral mood. I wish the Labor Party uh, was taking the kind of view that the Howard opposition took uh, back in the 1980s when Bob Hawke and Paul Keating were being a responsible Labor government. But, but my message to the public is that we are delivering. Uh, the carbon tax repealed, the mining tax repealed, the boat stopping, uh, the roads building and the budget under repair for the first time in seven years. With respect, uh, you were fairly feral in opposition, weren't you? I mean, the greatest respect by that. And, and isn't he just doing what you did? And why would he do anything different when it worked for you? Well, we tried to stop the Labor Party from putting in a carbon tax because uh, a carbon tax was a very bad policy. And mm. uh, that's what Bill Shorten wants to give uh, you the people back if he was to win an election. No, but he just says your uh, policies are bad. He'd whack the carbon tax back on. PM, he just says your policies are bad, so why would he support them and, and it worked for you? Why would he do anything different? Well, the interesting thing is that uh, Mr Shorten and the Labor Party are actually opposing uh, $5 billion of their own savings. And that's why I say it's a, it's, it's a budget sabotage approach from Labor, because savings that they had committed themselves to pre-election they're now opposing post-election. Now, um, fair enough uh, if they think it works for them. Mm. But in the end, what we've all got to be on about is what's best for our country. Um, Labor knows that a surplus is important and necessary because they told us till they were blue in the face that they'd actually delivered one. Mm. Uh, in fact, they'd given us debt and deficit stretching out as far as the eye can see. And, and, and Carl, it's my duty not to allow this intergenerational theft to go on. Mm. It's my duty to the Australian people. Uh, and sure, uh, there's some passing on unpopularity associated with it, but my duty uh, is not to load up our children and our grandchildren uh, with debt uh, so that the uh, promises of the former Labor government, which were never sustainable, 
uh, can continue to the, be delivered. The problem is here that the, the, the reality here is that the budget position um, uh, is in a shambles and, and every day it does get worse. It's not getting better. Well, it's not in a shambles. No, no one is buying Carl, what you I are selling is the there. point. No one is buying what you are selling, what you are laying down. And that's the problem. Well, well, well Carl, I, I, I want to stop you there. Uh, the budget started to come under control the day the government changed and the day we got a government which was serious about budget repair. Mm. Now, I don't pretend that uh, this parliament has been easy for us. Not for a second do I pretend that this parliament is easy for us. But we have already uh, made substantial changes uh, through the Appropriations mm. Bill. Uh, let's not forget that despite the difficulties in the Senate, we did get $10 billion worth of uh, savings uh, associated with the repeal of the mining tax. We got almost $3 billion savings in the Social Security budget uh, in the last sitting fortnight. Um, so we are making progress every day. It's not as easy as we would like, it's mm. not as fast as we would like, but we are committed to budget repair. We are committed uh, to ending the crime of intergenerational theft, uh, which Labor unfortunately still believes in. Are you worried that you might be a one-term wonder? Uh, look, uh, I, I was a member of the Howard government, uh, you might remember, Carl, and uh, the Howard government didn't look too flash at different times in its first term, but it went on to become probably the most successful government in Australia's post-war history. But my job every day is to discharge the heavy responsibilities, to dis discharge um, the job that I've been entrusted with to the best of my ability and to the best of my colleagues' ability, and that's exactly what we're doing. And as you, as you showed yesterday, you're front and centre now. Is Joe Hockey's job safe? Joe's doing a fine job. Uh, all of my front bench colleagues are doing a fine job. Is his job uh, safe? Some of them, of course, of course it is, Carl. Okay. Of course it is. And, and, and look, we can always play this game uh, of, of you know, trying to turn politics into a soap opera. But it's, it's a very serious business. Uh, the decisions that we make will impact on our children and grandchildren. And I am determined that they should have the freedom to determine their own destiny without being burdened by debt that we've run up uh, because the former government was so irresponsible and because the current parliament uh, doesn't always uh, have the intestinal fortitude uh, to do what's necessary for our nation's future. Two questions before we go. Um, this is very easy for Bill Shorten and you can see it uh, right away. Uh, first of all, he's just copying you. Um, it'll, it'll come down to your inability to pay um, the budget down and um, it'll also come down to broken promises. You can, do, you can do something about the budget, but you're not going to be able to do anything about broken promises. You've done that now. Well, Carl, we can have all sorts of arguments about the, the fine print and the semantics, but um, Let's not forget that despite everything, uh, school funding is going up, uh, public hospital funding is going up. Um, sure, uh, we have decided to cut uh, modestly uh, the ABC, but there's a world of difference between what's right and proper uh, when the then government is telling you that the deficit will only be $18 billion and it turns out to be almost $50 billion. Mm -hmm. And I think the public understand that when circumstances change, uh, you have to change your response. I think pu the public do understand that. And, and look, the fundamental commitment we, we made to the Australian people was that we would get the budget under control. And we've absolutely kept faith with that commitment. Just before we go, PM, who put that Christmas tree behind you? It looks like some sort well, of superhero tree. Well, that's the giving tree. <laughs> well, look, uh, that's the giving tree. And oh. Uh, I suppose the, cha the Channel 9 cameraman put, uh, put me in this position and good of you to advertise the giving tree, the giving tree in my office. Uh, I'm encouraging all the visitors to my office in this Christmas period uh, to bring a gift and the Salvation Army will distribute those gifts to uh, disadvantaged and needy families in the run up to Christmas and, and I think over the last quarter century, the Salvos have distributed over six million gifts as part of this whole Giving Tree mm. program. Larissa, it's a good program. Larissa Waters says boys shouldn't be given uh, toy guns to play with and Tonka trucks and girls shouldn't be given Barbies to play with this Christmas. Your thoughts on that? Look, uh, you know, and, and, and you wonder why the Parliament's difficult uh, when you've got people like that uh, in, in, with the balance of power in the Senate. Look. Uh, uh, I certainly don't believe in 
uh, that kind of political correctness, uh, let boys be boys, let girls be girls, uh, that's always been my philosophy and, and above all else, let parents do what they think is in the